today I have a video for you that I is kind of unlike all of the videos that I have. We have some ear training videos, we have some hand pattern videos, but we don't have any videos on improv, um, on improvisation, and that's because I'm really not, um, I can't say in any way, shape, or form that I um, am an improv player, but it's something that I am working on because I find it really, really exciting. It's something that's totally new to me. So to just kind of uh, just get us in into the improv mood, I'm going to give you a little background on um, my experience with it. So when I was in my bachelor's degree, I took a jazz improv class because my boyfriend at the time was a guitar player. He was a songwriter. He could play jazz. He could play blues. He could play rock music. He could pretty much play anything. He played a lot with George Clinton. Um, who's like, uh, what was his famous song? Um, oh my gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I think, um, oh my gosh. Well, anyway, George Clinton, he played with him a few times, um, and he just did a lot of blues stuff. He really loved the blues. So, anyways, uh, so I took a jazz improv class with him. I was the only string player, I was the only girl, and I was a really, really bad. <laughs> So I, um, it, everybody was super nice to me in the class, um, but I just really didn't know what I was doing. And it's just because, you know, when you're taught classically, you're not really taught how to, you're not really taught to think in a music theory type of way. You're not really taught to, to think in, in kind of a, um, a creative way like that, where you're making up your own thing. But, um, you know, back in the day, people would you know, like Mozart would just kind of make up his own cadenzas after the concerto, after the, you know, wherever the cadenza goes. Um, and, you know, Bach was like the, the ultimate improvisational pr player. And uh, many, many musicians at the time, you know, it was just kind of expected that you could improvise. So, but here we are today, and we don't really think about that um, as much. And it's really neat to see, you know, a violinist play folk music or just to sit down and improvise stuff or for, you know, guitar players to improvise their guitar solo and um, for singers to just, you know, um, soul singers just to, to improvise something beautiful with their voice and it's just, it's really, really interesting and, and something that it's almost kind of mysterious. How do they do that? So today we're going to have a really brief kind of intro to how to improvise. And for any of you out there who are actual, um, you know, you feel comfortable improvising and um, you have any tips or anything, please let me know. Please comment below and let us all know so that we can learn. Because I, as I said, I'm just learning this myself. It's something that I'm really excited about learning and I'm just kind of doing this in my own little way. And I um, have some tips from my um, boyfriend at the time who I was dating. I remember some of his little tips that he would give me. He would come over and play the piano and just play lots of rock music and he was always songwriting and it's just, you know, it was really inspiring but I just didn't know. I just, it was kind of over my head at the time. So, what I've done is I have stolen a little chord progression. Um, this is, it's, it's actually a chord progression from um, an eagle song and I love the eagles but you can really take any chord progression. This is basically just a standard chord progression. I could have just said it's just a standard chord progression. Um, but the chord progression is one, four, five, one. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, I have it written out right here. So we're going to be in the key of G. So here's all of the notes in the key of G. We have an F sharp. Everything else is natural. And I could have just called this one. I don't know why I called it eight. Um, so these are, I've just numbered all of the, the scales of, uh, I've numbered all of the notes of the scale, okay? And underneath here we have the actual chord progression. So, um, the one chord is G because the scale starts on G. So it's the first um, chord, and if we just kind of stack thirds on top of that, we get G, D, D. It's also a major chord. Um, you can see that it's not like a small Roman numeral. It's the, the capital Roman numeral. Now, if it was minor, we would have a minor third starting this. So we would be going from a G to a, a B flat, but we're going from a G to a B. 
fifth major. We're going over to the C chord, the four chord. It's made out of C, E, G. It's major because we have a major third here. It's not to be confused with the, um, the interval of a four because an interval of a four from G to C is a perfect fourth and it's not major or minor, it's just a perfect interval. So don't get that confused. We have a chord, which is the four chord, then we have the interval, the distance between G and C, and that's a perfect interval. So it can be a little bit confusing. Um, so anyway, we have the one, the four, and we're back to the one, and then we have the five. So the five chord is built out of D, F sharp, and skip G, go to A. I have the seventh, which is just a third above, um, which would be C here. So the seventh, when you have a five seven chord, it's just called a five seven. Um, it's just kind of really, really leads the ear back to the one, which is what this chord progression is just going to repeat back to. So you just kind of repeat this over and over and over again. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and play it for you so you can just see what it sounds like. It's a really beautiful. Oh, and before I play it, um, just to make it a little bit easier on, on the viola, I'm just going to be playing the fifth, so the outer notes of each chord. I'm going to just skip to the third. Um, these are called power chords, so when you just play the fifth um, of the chord, the outer notes of the chord, um, it's, it's the fifth, and it's just kind of a really nice open way to play the chord. So the way that I do that on, a, on my <clears throat> viola is very simple. <clears throat> so I'm going to just play the bottom two strings. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> so I'm going to be just on the um, C string and on the G string. Now the first chord, um, I have G and D. So I'm going to just play first finger on the bottom string and then the G. <laughs> then we have the open fifth, which is the C chord, C and G. <laughs> to the G chord, the one chord, and then the five chord we have D and A. That's the four. One, five, four. Now, if you're on the violin and you would like to play this chord progression, um, you could do the one using your open G and D. You can play the four with C and E, so third finger and first finger. Back to the one. Go over to the D string and the A string. And that's how you can play this chord progression. So just one more time. progression, uh, we're going to play each chord for four clicks. So I'm going to just go ahead and count the tempo. And I wish I could have this playing in the background. That would be really nice. But I don't, so we're going to just work with it. So... If I want to improvise over that, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is just by holding a note across these chord progressions that is similar. So if we look, we have G, 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 and then the closest note to G is F sharp, you guys. Did you get that? So it's just a half step below. And it's really nice because the um, the half step from F sharp back up to G is really nice. It's a really nice resolution for the ear. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just play G for three measures, right? Each measure has four beats in it, and then F sharp for one measure. So we have two, And then it just kind of keeps repeating like that. Now, um, one little tip from uh, my previous boyfriend. <laughs> it's so funny for me to say that such a long time ago. Um, so one tip I have from him is that uh, when you're improvising, you don't really want it to sound like a run-on sentence. You want it to sound like a voice. You know, a voice has little pauses here and there. It doesn't just keep talking like this all the time and never stop and just keep on going and it's just like, where is she going to breathe? <gasps> right? <laughs> so um, when you're playing, let's just add a little rhythm here and we're going to do some pauses in between. So, one, two, three, four. Something like that. I think I counted that right. Let's try that again. I think that was right. Boy, I'm a little bit out of it today. So, um, that also can be a little bit tedious after a while, right? It's just the same rhythm. So you can experiment um, with different things that you do, but just as a as like a brief introduction, your first introduction to um, improvisation, um, experiment with different rhythms, right? So we could do or or you can take something from the Suzuki book, right? Um, twinkle, twinkle. Variation two. Right? Um, or, you know, there's even the um, triplets. But that can kind of turn into a run on sentence. So, um, experiment with rhythms, experiment with adding some pauses here and there. You can even just hold long notes. You could just experiment with playing a half note and then pausing for a half note and then playing another half note um, and try to stick with a note that kind of just for your own sanity <laughs> um, stick with a note that you can kind of keep along a few different chord progressions and then go for the chord the note that's closest to the note that you're currently playing when the chord progression changes and once you're comfortable with that you can start to um, you know start on different notes so we started on the on the one right? But you could experiment starting on the third or the fifth, and then just kind of um, experimenting with different notes as you go along, just kind of wherever your ear leads you. And if you really, um, if you really, really want to get a handle on this, for me, what I'm doing because I don't have a teacher teaching me <laughs> how to do improv, um, it's just kind of coming somewhat naturally. Um, is that um, if you record the chord progression and you just record yourself playing it for about five minutes and then you record, you play it in the car when you're driving, you can experiment with kind of singing a melody over that. And if you want to try adding some words, um, just, you know, sing what you're driving past. Like, I'm driving past a red car. Um, I'm driving really fast, I'm driving really slow, I feel this way, um, I never sang a song before, just like silly things, and try to sing a melody over that, over the chord progression that you're playing, and just see kind of what comes, and then take what you practice kind of singing, and try to bring it out of your instrument, it will definitely give you some ideas. So, um, that's all for now. I think that if I do another improv video, I might talk to you about taking like a melody 
and then trying to do interesting things with the melody maybe or um, just other other things you can do. I'm kind of babbling at this point. I'm sorry. I hope this is interesting for you guys and I will see you soon. Let me know what your thoughts are and I'll see you later. Bye.